Hi, I'm Brent, and today we're going to be talking about some project boxes that I've been making on my Shapeoko, and I find them fairly useful for small electronic projects. I'm going to show you a few right here at the bench, then we're going to go over to the CAD system, uh, sketch one up real quick, and then take it over to the Shapeoko and cut it out, and we'll see uh, what that uh, all looks like. Okay, here's what we've got going on. I've got a couple of project boxes right here of, of different sizes that I've made in the past. I, I tend to throw these things together all the time, uh, but they have the same basic configuration. So I'll, I'll start with what we've got, then I'll progress to what we're going to look at today. So this is the basic box right here. It's a small wooden box. It has in the bottom of it, and these are, these are just sitting in there. The wires are actually holding them in place have a Teensy LC uh, processor, I have a switch, and I have a circuit board from uh, SparkFun that's uh, a little edge connector for a um, USB uh, that I can provide power to my projects with. So a little switch for turn the power on and off, uh, power connector, and then the circuit board. Now this particular one, I just have it set up uh, with a little display module showing a flame, a moving flame sitting over this lighter. So it's just something cute to leave sitting around um, if you want to display your electronic prowess, I guess. Amaze your friends. Uh, this is a, a bit bigger project. Now it's actually turned on. It's very difficult to see. You can kind of, uh, inside, kind of see it right there. I have a, a, a video of an eyeball uh, and it's just kind of glancing around and looking. This is a a CRT that I've uh, scavenged from an old camcorder that uh, was trash. So I've got the box that I've I've made here. Uh, typical of what we're going to make. This is about the biggest one I've ever put together, and they're they're mostly smaller than that. But they all take this type of configuration. You start with a block of wood. Uh, you route out on your shape oko the inside. Uh, you four corners right here to will support the the top which I don't have one cut for this particular piece but uh, the corners will support the top when you cut a piece of wood to that size to, to cover it all up and then you can do what you want with the top to pass connectors or whatever through it and the back or the front to put switches and wires and uh, plugs so basic configuration uh, here's one that I have with a uh, display mounted on the top. I've uh, I've put in two uh, connectors here so that I can plug my display unit in. Little o OLED display. Plug that into the top. Uh, this this actually has a Arduino processor on it, so you can actually run a project uh, around that connected to these pins, or you can set another little Arduino in there or a, a Teensy to, uh, to to power this display and just pass uh, pass images or text back and forth that you want to display on that. Uh, here is one of these things kind of without a project in it that just has the part setting in. So this one just has a little teensy setting in the bottom. I've got a switch that I will tip typically either uh, put the nut on to, to hold it in place. More often than not though I'll just dab some epoxy on the switch and stick it in there. Uh, once I put it in I don't really need it out. This is a little spark fun. I think there's a micro USB, micro and mini, I get them confused. I think there's a micro USB that I've uh, uh, machined a little slot in the edge of this box and uh, just slide the little connector break out from spark fun in. Then I can come over here and, and uh, connect all my USB signals. As you can see, I've had these connected up with the wires to this Teensy. I can uh, break out the power and run it through my switch and you get a little configuration like this one here where I'm actually configured up to my USB through this port in the back and I've got a little power switch so I can turn it off and on if I want to just use it for a standalone project. So that's kind of what uh, these things look like in general. Um, what we're going to be doing this morning, this afternoon, is we're going to make a little box like this. Now, I've been playing with uh, Raspberry Pi. This actually has a Raspberry Pi Zero in it right here along with the uh, CRT out of the camcorder. I've been playing with Raspberry Pis. They're, uh, the Zeros in particular, fairly small. Uh, they've got all kinds of project boxes you can make for them, but uh, having a Shape Oko, 
And it's like having a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Having a shape oko, everything looks like a potential little wooden project that I can make. So what I've been making is these uh, little uh, wooden enclosures to put my raspy pies in. So it, it looks something like this. This particular one, I've got a uh, phone jack in. I connect that up to the video out just as I it just as I'm using on this uh, CRT right here so I can plug that into an external monitor video if I want to use a composite video as opposed to the uh, HDMI or something else I've got a switch here and this is actually in my raspy this is not used for a power switch I, I most often put a push button as I've done on the back of, of this unit uh, when you shut off one of your little Linux devices like your Raspberry Pi they don't take very well to just turning the power off. Pulling the power tends to corrupt this the program residing in this flash uh, chip down here, and you have to find yourself having to reflash these and put the program code back on fairly often if you just yank the power to them. So the way you're supposed to turn these off is you uh, go in and, and program them up and, and, and tell them to shut down. Well, if you're running them in headless mode, which is what it's called when you don't have a terminal hooked up to these things, uh, they've got some breakout pins on here. You can just flip the switch, it shorts out two pins, and it tells the the uh, Raspberry Pi, tells Linux to go into shutdown. So 15, 20 seconds, it'll run through a little shutdown routine, then it's safe to pull the power on these. In any case, this is what I've been using for my little Raspberry Pi project boxes. I've got a, let's see, I think this is indicative of the one that we're gonna to build today. What I've got is I've got a little uh, cutout in the side of these where our Raspberry Pi slides in from the side. I've routed it out from the, the top with uh, some corners to hold the, the top in. And I typically just use a press fit. It's easy enough to cut these to size and use a press fit. I've got four holes that I've drilled in here that I just put pins in to engage the four holes on the Raspberry Pi and those those are not screwed in or nailed in or glued in or anything else I just drop pins in there then when I put this top on and press it down it holds the pins in place and keeps the whole thing together so this is what we're going to be building today a little box for a Raspberry Pi and if you'll bear with me for just a moment we'll go over to the CAD system and we'll uh, look at what we're what it takes to, to put all this together I guess as we start to look at the CAD program, it'd be good to talk about what we're going to build this with. I'm using a Shapoko, Shapoko 3 uh, from a Carbide 3D. This is, this is actually a model they don't make anymore. This has the SparkFun electronics controller on it. I've modified it uh, uh, just a little bit, I guess. I guess I put an a e-stop switch. I have a, a touch probe. I've uh, put a T-track table, and you can see right here I've... Uh, made a cutout where I can uh, pull part of my table out of the way to handle things that uh, have a deeper depth of cut than I would normally have on this table. It uh, doesn't have that great of a depth of cut to begin with and I gave up about three quarters of an inch when I put on this uh, T-Track top onto the existing table. I've uh, just for automated automating the, the system and some things I needed to do to make the touch probe work. I fabricated some homing sensors. I'm a big fan of uh, non-contact sensors like that, so I've got uh, home position sensors on all three axes just so when I give it the home command it can do that. And again, that's, that was necessary to use the software from Carbide, the version of software that uh, is required before I can use my uh, touch sensor to locate the, the corner of my workpiece. Anyway, this is what we're going to be cutting with today. and. Uh, the software I'm driving this with, uh, I'll show you right here. All right, I've taken our measurements, I've made a little sketch, and then I've put that into the easel program, and I've saved this under a file you see up here in the corner, uh, Raspi Zero Base. Um, you can kind of see in the 3D view over here, the, the cut view. So I've got uh, four corners up here with a little recess. That's where our wooden top is going to sit when I get this all cut up. I've got uh, little dog bones. They call these little partial circles right here at the corners. What that does is it allows your router bit to go past the corner. So you end up with a square corner 
to sit your top in instead of a rounded corner like you get with a normal router bit. Uh, I've got these drills right here. These are drills instead of drawing a hole. What I'm doing is I'm drilling through and when we put all of this together, uh, and I'll show you in another drawing in a minute, we're going to put uh, pins or screws through those holes and that's going to hold the Raspi Pi Zero in place once we slide it into the side. So this is our first cut. I'm using a 1 8 inch bit for this. I've got one here that I call a hog out. I use a quarter inch bit. The, the difference in cut time in these is like a factor of four or five. Uh, going from the uh, quarter inch to the one eighth inch. I want to start with the one eighth inch bit because this chews out a lot of material in a hurry and it tends to splinter the top surface. If you come in and use that quarter inch bit first, it'll tend to chew up all these corners on the top surface. And then after I've done the first two operations, the eighth inch bit to get the top started, uh, the quarter inch bit to take us down to depth, we go into the side view of this thing right here. It's not real obvious from this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two very deep slots in the bottom of this. I'm going to uh, cut a, a shallow slot here to put the uh, edge connector, or just to, to uh, slide the raspy in so all the edge connectors are, are visible. I've got two holes here. This one's got a little recess around it uh, just because I've got a, a very short necked uh, connector I'm putting in there. I'm putting a switch in here tied to a reset pin. So that's uh, that's what we've got in store. Uh, we start off with this. We move to the uh, base hog out. Then we move on to the uh, uh, side cut. So it'll be a three-step operation. I've got the uh, I've got the material uh, secured into my Shapeoko router table right now in this orientation. So we're going to first do this eighth inch cut. We're going to move to this one quarter inch cut and then we're going to move to this uh, side cut which will entail moving the material over 90 degrees so that I can cut into the side of it. Uh, we'll get that started directly here. Uh, it, it occurs to me that looking at the CAD program, uh, for cutting this slot on the side you're looking into it like that. It's a bit confusing to what you're looking at because it has a very long slot then it just has some little squares and a little tiny slot over here. And it looks confusing. It's, it, it looks like you're just kind of... Uh, it doesn't look like you're actually cutting a slot in the side. So just as a way of explanation, I don't talk about it when I'm doing the CAD, but as a way of explanation, I've got to put two deep slots over here. As I'm doing these operations, I have to reach all the way through this space and I have to machine in, in that back pedestal right there. So that will be the little square you see over to the, the CAD program over here and the little square you see over there. The very light square that goes all the way across is just this slot. It doesn't have to be that deep. You can see I just have to cut this much to go completely through this front. So on the CAD program, as you're looking at this slot, you don't see that this is all cut out. All you see is a, a funny looking little slot with two rectangles over here, two rectangles over here, then the, the long rectangle like that. That's the reason for it. On uh, the long rectangle, I just have to cut through this thickness. The, the bigger slot, the bigger uh, rectangle on this side, I have to cut through this leg. And same on this one, a bigger rectangle, I'm cutting through that leg with my bit. This is all the bits coming in like this as I'm stepping around making my cuts. And then the, the long slot, I'm just coming in at the very back and I'm cutting the slot back there to hold my PCBA. So that's why it looks so funny in the CAD drawing. If you look at that and think it's not going to come out with this, that's because when I've got this all into my uh, Shape Oco, all of this is already routed out. So there's no point in making those operations take long enough to go all the way down when I really just need to cut a little material. It's just saving me time on running the machine is, is all it's doing. So a little explanation there for that. Okay, I've secured the material into the clamps here in the Shapeoko, and I've set the work zero. I've got my bit down touching the corner 
halfway through the bit on the X and Y and just touching on the Z. So ready to turn this on and uh, start cutting. So I'll reach over to my software, my easel, uh, tell it to raise the bit, confirm the spindle is on, and then I'll hit carve. So we'll see what this uh, initial cut looks like when we get finished. Here we go. Okay, that takes care of the first pass cut with the 1 8 inch bit. I need to swap that bit out and also the chuck for a 1 quarter inch bit. Uh, this is the original chuck for this uh, DeWalt router. For the 1 8 inch bit, I'm using a precision chuck that uh, holds it a little more securely so I can do uh, more fine detail work. Uh, probably be beneficial to have all those for the one quarter inch bit also, but frankly I don't use the one quarter inch bit for anything other than roughing, so it's not been a factor at this point. So let me change out that bit and uh, move on to the second cut. Okay, I have the bit changed out to a one quarter inch bit from the one eighth. Here is that precision chuck I was mentioning earlier in the one eighth inch bit that we were cutting with. Uh, you can see just by the jaws of the chuck here that it holds the bit a little more securely, a little more precision, just a little more precision of a clamping nut on it and everything. So again, good for the detail work that you tend to do with the 1 8 inch and 1 16th inch bits. So uh, ready to do the rest of this. Now that entire first operation took about 26 minutes and a lot of that was drilling those four holes in the corner so even without the four holes in the corner which you're not going to speed up much just doing it uh, with this program on this router uh, it is about 15 minutes to cut just what we've cut so you'll see how quickly uh, we're able to do the rest of this cut now that we've moved to the uh, one quarter inch bit so any further delay let's get that started confirm my work zero I have the bit down touching in the corner as soon as my program responds tell it to raise the bit confirm the spindle is on I will turn the spindle on and hit carve and then we'll continue this Okay, that completes our one quarter inch bit cut. You can see, I'm not sure how well it turned out in the video, but you can see in this top corner here of the, uh, the workpiece. I don't know how well that's showing up on the video, but you can see that uh, as we were coming in with that one quarter inch bit, it was chewing out the top part of this uh, the sides of this hole up here so again that's why 
That's why I try and get all my initial cuts up near the top, all the, up near the edge of the wood done with the eighth inch bit. It's much friendlier, makes a much cleaner cut, has less tendency to chip out like that. So this is fine. Uh, where we're going to need those holes is when we get down to about right in here, so that, that won't impact us at all, but uh, just a good illustration of why we start out with the one eighth inch bit to uh, try and get a little bit better cut. So the next thing we do is we re-fixture this up, change back to our one eighth inch bit, and we do this uh, side cut right here so that we can slide the raspy zero into the side to actually use this thing when we're done. So that's coming up next. Uh, confirm my work zero. Raise the bit, spindle is on, put my hearing protection on here, turn on the spindle, then I'll hit carve. Okay, that completes the initial cut on the uh, side slot. I need to change my 1 16th inch bit and continue. All right, I've uh, put in my 1 8 inch drill bit. Again, I basically just needed something with a little more Z height. Now these things break really easy, so I've just got it cutting that very deepest part of the cut. Hopefully this bit will last through that. So um, to the point where it tells me to turn the spindle on, which I'll do, then I'll hit carve, and we'll see if this works without breaking this uh, drill bit. All right, that takes care of that final cut to make my notch in the bottom part of this uh, box. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, the bottom of that drill bit's pretty black, and it really doesn't like being used for a router bit, but. Uh, kept my cuts to a minimum and we were able to get down deep enough to make them. So let's see how it all turned out. Okay, after we've got everything unclamped and deburred a bit, here is the finished product. Got my raspy zero stuck into the bottom in the slots. I've got my uh, switch mounted on one side, my connector mounted on the other. This is not all wired up now. And just kind of for demo purposes, you can see that I can access the uh, end panel here with the USB connectors just fine. So that's pretty much what the finished product will look like with that or a cover like that in place. And it'll set, glue a couple of little legs to the bottom of it and it'll set like that that probably being the front and have a little nice Raspberry Pi project box. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll post some of the relevant uh, construction files in the comments. Thanks for watching.